All right, lots to get to. For more to break down on what went down in the courtroom today, let's check in with Zach Schoenfeld, legal reporter for the Hill.com. He was in the courtroom. And Misty Maris, a trial attorney and legal analyst, joins me here on the set. Uh, Zach, let's start with you because you were in the room where it all happened. The prosecutor said this is not politics as usual, it's politics for profit. Uh, said this was a United States senator on the take. How would you assess the opening of the government's? Uh, statement today. The government, over the course of about 45 minutes, uh, was delivering this opening statement pretty slow and steady, walking through what they said was three different quid pro quos that they say Senator Bob Menendez had engaged in uh, with different New Jersey businessmen, uh, talking about the gold bars, the cash that the FBI had allegedly found at his home uh, when they searched it. And simply, as you said, they summed it up by calling it politics for profit. Uh, and also calling him a corrupt politician. So certainly mincing no words right off the bat. How did the jury seem to be taking it? You know, I think the jury was was certainly taking it all in. This is the first time that they were actually hearing prosecutors outline their case. Of course, they were also in the room with the senator himself. The senator was keeping eye contact with the jury for most of opening statements, both during prosecutor's opening statement as well as his own lawyer's statement, uh, only breaking eye contact a few times and for the most part just sitting motionless in his chair, not giving too much expression uh, and sitting stone-faced. So I think at this point, the jury is still just taking it all in, uh, both you know what prosecutors say is their case and, of course, as you were alluding to earlier, uh, Senator Menendez's lawyer getting up there uh, and calling those claims outrageously false. Yeah. All right, Misty, let's get to those outrageously false claims by the, uh, according to the defense attorneys. Uh, Menendez's lawyers told jurors, hey, this is all normal senatorial duties, the kinds of things every senator does for his or her constituents, except he got a Mercedes Benz, a pile of gold bars, and what, half a million dollars in cash stuffed into his pockets and boots in his house? Um, it, 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 this is not normal. How is that going to fly, do you think? Such a big difference from yeah. the prosecution's <laughs> opening statement, which was very meticulous and went through all of this. So look, the defense tried to offer explanations, and most of that was shifting accountability to his wife. They went a little bit farther than I expected, Elizabeth. They said, you know, he was entranced by her. She's a siren. He didn't know about her financial problems. He was so obsessed with her. Basically, anything she said, he just believed. He said the gold bars, he thought that was family money that she had. The, the, the Mercedes, he said he thought she bought it. And the cash, that's separate apart from his wife. They say that he's been stockpiling that away in $500 increments for years and years and years. And they want to prove that because some of those bills are actually out of circulation and can't be traced back to these businessmen. So that's how the defense set out the broad aspects of the case. All right, but how are his lawyers going to explain all the acts that he took for the people whose fingerprints are on the gold bars and on the cash? You know, Elizabeth, this is what I think is so interesting because the defense has said, this is diplomacy. This is what senators do. He's advocating for his constituents. Of course he's going to meet with foreign nationals. Of course he's going to be involved with foreign governments. And one thing I think is going to be interesting about this trial, hearing the prosecution and the defense today, it's going to require the jury to understand the concepts of what is normal in diplomacy, in mm -hmm. senatorial acts, in order to assess whether or not there was a deviation. Because I, like you, think, okay, so you just happen to have gold bars that came from somebody who you did some favors for or took favorable actions for. It just really doesn't serve common sense, but we'll see as the trial plays out. All right, one of the three businessmen, Misty, accused of being part of the bribery scheme has flipped and is going to testify for the prosecution. How crucial is that? Huge, because the prosecution has made a big deal out of, about it in their opening statements of course, because that's going to lay out a lot of what the communications were like, a lot of what this pay for play was like. And even though it doesn't necessarily apply to the other two businessmen, when you have the testimony of the prosecution's witness, it's going to be impactful because it's going to set the tone for everything the prosecutors are going to show, which is essentially similar acts with the other two businessmen who are the subject of the case. Well, I mean, he's going to say, I told Bob Menendez, I'll give you this much money or I'll give you these gold bars or it's Right. Uh, and plus, we have text messages about when, you know, getting, uh, have a brand new Mercedes. And I mean, there seems to be a lot of communication between Menendez and his wife that would indicate he knew where this stuff was coming from. Right. The documents are going to be key. And that's why I think we're seeing this defense that I, I still think is a little cockamamie, blaming his wife to this extent, because prosecutors say she's a go-between. And some things went through her because he said, 
you don't want that in writing. I don't want, I can't have my name on that. He says, well, I just didn't know. So I think with the witness that flipped, that's going to be a big part of the defense. They're going to say, well, don't you have a non-prosecution deal yeah. to testify here? So all of that will play out, but it really is a complicated case. I can see why we're looking at something that's going to go through June, because a lot of foundation to set before you can even get into the meat. Zach, lots of talk uh, in the opening statements today about Nadine. Uh, the senator's already throwing her under the bus, saying she did it all, and I had no idea. I, she wasn't in court today, however. No, she is not. She is also a co-defendant in this case, but uh, she is going to be tried at a later time, at least uh, well into the summer, July, if not after. Uh, she has an undisclosed medical condition uh, that she said she needs surgery for, so she is not being tried uh, alongside her husband. Uh, and like you were saying, uh, Bob Menendez already throwing his wife under the bus. Actually, at one point, uh, his attorney had pulled up a slide of one of those Where's Waldo's puzzle, except it said, Where's Bob? And what they asked all the jurors to do is they said, every time you hear a piece of evidence about the senator's wife, just ask yourself where's Bob because according to the defense he was in DC doing his job and simply just did not know about all of these things that she was allegedly doing yeah very very interesting by the way Misty very quickly the judge ruled that they cannot Bob Menendez cannot introduce his psychiatrist which as a witness which he wanted to do to explain that he had a traumatic childhood as the son of Cuban uh, refugees and that he likes to hoard cash in his pockets and the boots in his closet I guess yeah they said no to that one we, yeah. we kind of expected that yesterday I think. Indeed. all right <laughs> Misty Maris Zach Schoenfeld thank you so much for starting us off on this busy Wednesday